What's up, people? I'm Zog here with a bunch of tips for you on this new Card Life game. Now, before we get started, Patreon, Discord, and Twitter links are down in the description. And if you like the video, please do hit that like button. It really helps out a lot more than you realize. That guy looks like he's mad at me. But this is by no means a complete list of things you're going to find in the game. People will discover more. People will have different ways to present the same information that I give. And this may indeed have repeats of other tips that other people have found. I don't actually know. This is just a collection of tips that I found that I feel was going to help the new Card Life player. I think this is just going to give you a little bit of a boost of knowledge uh, and help you get started in this game. Now, when going up to a tree, a lot of people will do something like this in order to chop it down. When really, if you go to the side, you don't have to move anything. And it actually goes a lot faster. You could also go a little bit to the side and just move your mouse cursor just a little bit. But at the end of the day, chopping a tree from the side is a lot faster than chopping it from the front. Card Life uses a fragment system for the, its items, at least the, the terrain items that you collect out of the world. Now when you dig something out, you get enough fragments sometimes to collect an entire piece of a, of a thing. And the game will automatically construct all of those fragments into a full piece once it has enough. And that's why you see down there, number eight, we have four pieces. Even though that last message says we only collected fragments, it was enough to convert it to a full piece. So our number eight slot gained an extra one. As you can see, is it, it almost looks like it's partially filled and that's because it is. There's only a couple of fragments in this block. So until we get enough fragments, it won't actually tell us we have a full one. And that's just kind of how the game works. If you want a full block, you have to dig a little bit more, get a few more fragments, and then you'll start to gain them. Now, even though it says right down there, seven dirt, we have, we have seven dirt. We have a uh, number seven slot. It says we have two dirt. We actually have two dirt plus a few fragments. The game does not tell you how many fragments you have over that number, but this is your lowest amount. It rounds down. It doesn't count the fragments. Only when you have enough fragments to combine it all the way into one full piece will that number at the bottom go up. Now, how do you gain strength? How do you get stronger? How are you able to survive longer? Now, the first bit you should know is that souls are incredibly important. They are your primary source of gaining strength. Now, the armor is good. Yes, it's got resistance, it's got armor, it's got health bonuses and stamina bonuses, but the stuff you get from souls are much, much better. Even one of the, some of the earlier ones, like the crab soul, or uh, even the wild boar soul or the wolf soul. These guys are fairly easy to get early on and they really, really, really help out. Now, for example, this guy down here, you see health bonus is 1%. Base health, okay, that's five health. You go up to 505, that makes sense. Now, if you tack on something that adds like 300, 300 health, like my lizard man soul here, then we go up to 807 now. If this was 1% of your base health, then it would still only give you an extra 5, which would put me up to 812. But it counts the soul increases as well, which means it actually gave us 8 health and therefore brought us up to 815. So these, the armor is a way to modify the base stats plus soul stats. If you find any creatures with a red outline, that means they are an elite creature. This guy is a Triceratops. This is an elite Triceratops. This one will not drop a soul. This one will. When crafting things, it will often tell you that it needs a specific type of wood, oak wood in this case. However, it is wrong. It does not need that type of wood. You can get any type of wood. And if you watch, this now changes into redwood. You can use any type of wood for these. And there are a couple other items that will also that are also interchangeable. So if it's asking for a particular type, try a different type of the same material and it might work. 
There are a couple of recipes in here, such as the enchanting table and the clothing rack that require coarse hide and cannot be used with rugged hide. The enchanting table, when you want to enchant an item, it uses some of the gems and some of the special drops, as well as these guys, which can be gotten from killing certain monsters. Be sure you keep all of the gems. When you're going through mining in the caves, make sure you keep all of the gems and all of the special drops from all of the creatures. This is probably not all of them. These are just the ones that I've collected. But make sure you keep track of them because they are going to be useful when you get to the enchanting. If there is an enemy you really want to be able to kill, you can actually kite these guys almost infinitely. They have in their code, they want to get really, really, really close to you before they try to swing. So as long as you do so smartly, you can kite almost any mob for as long as you need to. Now you do have to be mindful, for example, if you take too sharp a turn, they actually get that distance uh, that they need and they will swing and hit you a couple of times. And you can go ahead and kill them with your sword if you really wanted to. You can see beacon effects from a decent distance away. So if there's ever a time, say you're over here mining and your pickaxe breaks, you can drop an item on the ground temporarily Run back to your base, grab your pickaxe, and find the exact position you were in without any trouble, just by dropping an item on the ground. They also linger for a very long time. I'm not sure the exact circumstances in which they disappear. It could be distance. So if your base is too far away, use it cautiously because it might not work. Uh, it also could be time-based, but right now, this, these items here have been on the ground for over 15 minutes. So even if it is time-based, you have a huge amount of time to get back and forth with very limited uh, effort and you very limited worry so long as you aren't taking your time. When digging with either your hands or any tool, there are two buttons. You have the left click and the right click. Left click digs a lot. Right click digs a little. Okay, this is a one-layered, right click is a one-layer dig. The left click is like a three layer dig. It's actually a five layer dig if you're looking at a wall. For example, if I aim at this block, you're gonna see this one, this one, this one, and this one. All of those are going to disappear. They're all gonna be pushed back some. But left clicking on the same block will only get rid of two of them. The one you aimed at and the one below it. When placing items, it is very, very similar. Left click will place a bunch. Right click will place one layer, in theory, one layer, two layers. Uh, and if you're looking at a wall, it'll place at the level you're looking and one above. For example, right here, it's gonna go at this level and the one above it, and it skips below. The terrain also tries to guess what you want. So it will end up getting funky, as you can tell in here. If you just keep playing with it, you can actually fix it to a decent degree if you kind of keep these little tips, if you will, in mind, you can actually fix things and make it look semi-decent without too much effort. Maybe that's not semi-decent to some of you, but it's pretty good for this game. As far as navigation is concerned, number one, you do not start with the bar that I have at the top of the screen. You instead have to go solely off of the map now, the map does have these markers. If you find something interesting, say, the location of a base, all you have to do is click that location and a marker is automatically brought from the bar over to that place. Now, sometimes you accidentally click, like I just did there, oops. If you go down there and click on that same thing again, it resets it. All you do is click and click. You don't have to click and drag, you don't name things, you just click where you want a marker and if you don't want that marker anymore, you click again on it and it will remove that marker. Now, as far as the compass is concerned, as you can see, the same markers that I have here, white, blue, and red, are all on this little compass, which means you can use it to track the markers that you place in order to get the compass. However, 
you need to use the forge. This guy right here is made in it and it requires iron ingots, which means you also need the furnace. Make these two things, get a couple pieces of iron and it's really not that complicated to make the compass. After you make the compass, you see there it does say it's an accessory and you kind of see where mine is placed. You can place it at any one of those slots. While you were on your travels in the early days, collect as much wood or chop down as many trees and harvest as many bushes as you can. One, bushes, some bushes give you berries. That's your food source. That's your first food source. Number two, other bushes, these guys right here, for example, give you fiber. You want all of the fiber, all of it. Trees give you wood, obviously, but they also give you resin. Resin is used when making torches. If you like to be able to see, you want to chop down all the trees. This game uses a huge amount of wood and a huge amount of fiber. Collect all of it that you can. Stash it, store it, keep it because almost every single recipe uses fiber to some degree. Even some of these other ones that you might think, oh, we're gonna move on from it. Say for this guy right here where you need thread. No, you make thread with fiber. You just need more of it to do what you gotta do. So collect it all, chop down all the trees, harvest all the bushes. In my experience, tunneling does not do very well as far as getting resources. You don't really get them in tunnels. You can't create your own tunnel. Your best option for finding ore is to instead find an opening to a cave. Explore to find that opening. When it comes to chopping down trees, as you might have thought already, it is true that you get more wood from a bigger tree than you do from a smaller one. This guy right here, let's see how much it gives us. Let's see, it looks like we get eight. And from this guy, looks like we're up to 19. So as you can see, it is definitely beneficial to find the bigger trees and chop them down when you need wood. When putting things into an inventory, they do not automatically stack. For example, the dirt that I just placed should have stacked automatically with the dirt that was already here, but it didn't. You can easily clear up some space in your storage if you just drag and drop it on there. You just gotta be mindful of things. For example, that one that I didn't even see until just now. When you die, you will spawn back in at your nearest bed. Which means if you're out exploring, you can feel free to, re to lay a bed down wherever it is you are. I don't have nothing down there. You should not have been there. You can feel free to lay a bed wherever you are there. And if you die in that area, you will go back to that bed and it will be much easier to get your items. And when you come back home and die, you will still come back to the bed that is closest to you. Meaning the one that's probably at your base. So you can rest assured that placing a new bed should not interfere with the old bed. That said, you can also create a grid-like system of beds and basically be sure that you are going to spawn nearby to wherever you died, regardless of where you die on the map. Or if you wanted to think it out a little more and you travel to certain locations more often, you can put beds along that path uh, to and from your base, and that way if you die anywhere along the way, you will then still be on that particular path, and you won't have to worry about getting lost or losing your stuff. Just an easy one, real quick, you cannot pick things up after you place them. There's no pick up option, not yet. So if you place down something, be sure that's where you want it for the long haul. In this particular series, I have already left one of each of these, minus the crafting table or the enchanting table. I have not actually crafted this. The first time I've crafted this one. But the other three I did craft and leave at my first original base, back when I was still learning the basics of the game. 
And that's about it for the tips that I have that I have learned so far in my particular series. It does not mean, as I said in the beginning of the video, it does not mean that all of them have been found. There are lots other tips out there. More will come as updates happen. Some of the ones that I showed you here will break because they were actually glitches or were not intended uh, and were, you know, fixed or whatnot. Like the beacon here, I'm sure items are supposed to disappear at some point. It's been over 20 minutes, 25 minutes now. They're, they're still there. But if there was some tip in here that helped you, please do hit the like button and let me know in the comments which one it was. If you feel like there was one in here that was just so much common sense that it should not have even been in a video, then so be it. You can throw that down in the comments too and I'll take it to heart. Mm, probably not. But <laughs> I feel like everything that was put into the video was, I think it had its place, and somebody somewhere is going to find it useful. So I hope, I hope it helped, I really do. Uh, and if it did, please do hit the like button and subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching, do what you do, and I will see you next time. Peace out, peeps.